Selective Laser Sintering, or SLS, first became commercially available in 1989 after Carl Deckard invented the technology at the University of Texas and later founded the DTM Corporation. Soon afterwards, EOS was founded in Germany and they have now become one of the worldwide market leaders in SLS technology. Here we have the EOS P100. It has a maximum build volume of 200 by 250 by 330 millimeters. The process begins with the creation of a 3D CAD model. This can be done in numerous programs, including NX, SolidWorks, and many more. Upon completion, the model is converted to an STL file that is able to describe the surface geometry of the part by translating it into a number of small triangles. The part is transferred to the build station control software. In this case, NetFab is being used. SLS requires no extra support structure to be generated, as the powder itself acts as a support. This also allows multiple items to easily be built on top of each other, increasing overall productivity. The part is sliced into layers as thin as 0.1mm and is now ready to be printed. The chamber is heated to a temperature of 176.5 degrees C, and a thin layer of polyamide powder, more commonly known as Nylon 12, is spread across the build platform. A 30 watt CO2 laser selectively draws the initial cross section of the part by increasing the temperature of the powder close to its melting point, thereby fusing the powder particles together and forming a solid layer. Any material that is not part of the model's geometry is left unsintered in the original powder form and acts as a support structure. The build platform lowers a single layer thickness. The leveling blade sweeps across and covers the platform with another layer of powder. The laser then selectively sinters the next layer. This process of recoat and scan is repeated layer by layer until the model is finished. Upon completion, the powder bed is removed and the sintered part is removed from the powder. The part is brushed down to remove the surrounding powder and then blown with a high powered jet of air to remove any stubborn powder that has been left behind. The part is now complete. Due to the tough and durable materials used, common applications of SLS are for bespoke prosthetics as well as jewellery and other small tough parts that can be used for functional tests.